what's up, what's up? I hope you all are doing a wonderful day. I hope you're enjoying your precious life on this wonderful planet of ours, Mother Earth. Today, I'm going to be talking about 15 disturbing facts you didn't know about the Middle Ages. From an article located, located on the internet that you can find yourself. The name of the article is called 15 Disturbing Facts You Didn't Know About the Middle Ages. Alright, the Middle Ages, and I'm reading verbatim. Verbatim. The Middle, I'm not going to read everything, just some of it. The Middle Ages are widely considered to be one of the darkest errors in human history. Okay, the people go there, they're demonstrating their arrogance right there. They're talking about human history. The Middle Ages does not affect Africa. It does not affect China. It did not affect uh, Australia. It only affected one region on the planet. Here it's saying human history. Uh-uh. It's not no human history. It affected a certain uh region on the planet. Historically sandwiched between the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the dawn of the Renaissance era, the Middle Ages represent a, le hey, hey, go, a less progressive period for humanity than their surrounding area, era. It made a big mistake again. It said less for humanity. The Middle Ages the Dark Ages, it did not affect China. It did not affect Japan. It did not affect the Philippines. It did not affect Africa, and on and on and on. It only affected a certain region, a certain classification of people. Again, they're showing their arrogance right here by saying it affected humanity. It did not affect the entire Earth. Unfolding over a wide swath in history. They're that arrogance again in history. Whose history? From the 5th century up until the 15th century, the Middle Ages were marked by plagues, wars, famine, civil uprising, tyrannical oppression, and religious control and persecution. Science and medicine were less evidence-based and more built around superstition and a deep-seated fear of God was used to control and dominate the people. If the Middle Ages still sound good to you, here are 15 little-known facts that will make you very happy to be alive in this country for me, if you're in the United States, for you, it may be somewhere else. But wherever you are, you're more blessed now than the people who were in that middle age period. So it's up to you, ladies and gentlemen, to discover what region, what geographical location really experienced the, the, these so-called middle or dark ages. One more time, I just like the urge by saying humanity. All right, number one, birth control. Medieval scientists had some interesting theories regarding birth control. In the 13th century, it was believed that one an amulet contained a weasel. You know that little animal, the, 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 the little little rodent, weasel testicles would prevent pregnancy. Perhaps there it is. Perhaps there is some validity to this theory, and that no one would ever want to have sex with someone wearing a weasel testicle necklace. That's step one to show how backwater people, anime, middle ages, the dark ages were. But I can't call them too uh, far-fetched because you know some cultures they wear certain animal parts as a, uh, you know, as some type of enchantment, some type of uh, ceremonial Adornment, so I can't blend them but the weasel testicles. 
every part of the world has that special animal part that gives them power and strength if you wear them the horns, if you wear the fur, etc. So hey, I'm not going to blame the Middle Ages but the Weasel Festival. Every region of the earth had their unique favorite things that they do with animal parts. So, number two, beauty. During the, mani the med medieval era or the Dark Ages, pale white skin was considered to be a, a pillar of feminine beauty. So it's telling you right there, see? It said human history. Now it's talking about pale white skin. So what people is this really talking about? In the beginning that I read, it talked about the human, human history. Now it's talking about pale white skin. So you get the point. That was their arrogance. So during the medieval era, pale white skin was supposed to be a pillar of feminine beauty. To attain a nice white hue, women applied white powder to their faces that often contained toxic lead. But again, it was not scientifically advanced, so they did not know the ramifications or the harm that lead could have caused them if it was absorbed in the skin. Even worse, many women would have a barber cut their arms and drain their blood until they went pale. So they forced paleness upon themselves. Many women did this. It seems women have always suffered for beauty. Okay, a little sense of humor there. But you got the idea, the extremes that women went through to look pale. Number three, chamber pots. Parents walking around the streets were often sl splashed with human excrement. Dump on them by people emptying their chamber pots from their windows. They didn't have no toilet. They didn't put their uh, body waste in a particular hole. Nope. During that dark age, the middle age, they, they, they did their, they placed their bodily excrement in a pot and they took the pot and just dumped it outside. Now we, now I do know most, some culture was more civil than this. They did respect human existence. During this dark ages of medieval, medieval ages, it did not seem like they had respect for people walking outside. They just took the pot and just dumped it outside. You walk with your wife, your children, take the Sunday scroll, all of a sudden somebody throw all their bodily waste on you, ruining your beautiful Sunday or Saturday attire. Many medieval streets had public sewers or gutters that ran right down the middle of them. So they had their gutter was in the middle of the street with filth and trash flying all the way down the street. This led to extremely unsanitary conditions for the street people and overall an awful stench. And you probably heard that from learning in school or college whatever. The medieval period, it had a foul, inhospitable stench because people did not take precautions in placing their bodily waste in a simple hole in the ground. You just toss it outside for anybody to get it. So you can imagine the plague and diseases that ravaged those particular people. Number four, the barber pole. In the dark ages or medieval times, barbers were busy people. Aside from providing grooming service, they also performed minor surgeries and dentistry. So they were the jack of all trades. Not only did they cut your hair, they performed dentistry and surgery not the surgery and dentistry that you think of today. To advertise these additional medical services, barbers would wrap blood white gauze rags around a pole outside their shops. That's where the signature red and white spiral pole that we all recognize today came from. Mm -hmm. 
Number five, mouth, high, eyebrows. So you get the idea right there, but this is going to talk about. During the reign of Charles I, it was considered beautiful for women to have no eyebrows. Uh -huh. So many women shave theirs off and use oils and compounds to prevent hair growth. When the bald eyebrow look lost popularity, uh -huh. many women would many women who could no longer grow eyebrows had artificial eyebrows fashioned out of mouth hide or mouth skin. So they had mouth skin to represent their eyebrows. And imagine. You have to kill a lot of mice, mice and mice to have them eyebrows because I'm sure that mice decompose real quick. So that decomposing mouth gave you an, an additional foul smelling odor and it can contributes to body sickness because of the, the, because the decomposition. I'm sure flies were everywhere. Flies were everywhere if they got them decomposing eyebrows on them. You fall asleep, your face probably full of flies, them ladies. So we see what the Middle Ages was like. Time was different. That's number six. During the Dark Ages or Middle Ages, time was interpreted in a different way. Different regions told time differently, but it was common to divide the night and the day into 12 hour parts. As the length of night and day is converged depending on the time of the year, this meant that hours were a fluid measurement. Uh -huh. So what does that mean? I leave that up to you, a fluid measurement. So, was time based on whatever the king or the queen said for that particular day or year? Did they determine it's four o'clock or five o'clock? When they felt it, it doesn't mean it's fluid. Fluid means hey, it can, it can move in any direction. It can take any volume. It can have any shape. So that's what I mean by fluid. Number seven, laundry detergent. In order to wash their clothes and linen, medieval launderers may lie out of ass you know, the stuff that you burn up off the fire, you have that ass left over, and human urine. Uh huh. So their laundry detergent was ass and human urine. They didn't care what gender, male or female, boy or girl, young or old, still we want your urine to wash our clothes. So imagine what that clothes smelled like. It is. This thing is getting worse and worse as we go down this list and seeing how those people live back then and there. The perfect recipe for that refreshing. Okay, they're telling a, telling a joke again. I'm just going to skip their jokes. I, I'm not in the mood for telling jokes. All right, number eight is the chastity belt. I'm sure everybody heard of those chastity belts. In a display of female subordination. Men would lock off their women's gentles with a chastity belt while they were away at war. So the chastity belt, it, from this reading, it did not seem like it was women imposed. Men imposed that on their women, on their wives, on their girlfriends. They had no choice. The men forced on them. So was the chastity belt permanently affixed to them until the men got back from war? And if the men died more, what would happen to the women that don't? Who had the key? Number nine. Men were metrosexual. If you don't know what it means, you can pause this, get a dictionary, or you can look on Google or YouTube, whatever your favorite search engine is, see what this word metrosexual means. During the 1300s, men's clothing became much less conservative throughout much of Europe. There you go again. It said, in the beginning, it said humanity. Now it's talking about Europe. It didn't say China. 
He didn't say Indonesia. He didn't say Europe. Remember were tight corsets that hid their bellies and emphasized their frame. They also wore increasingly bright colored clothing and outfits made up of two bright contrasting colors became fashionable. Okay, so they were as colorful. Men also began to wear long pointed shoes called cockles that kept getting longer and longer until Edward III declared a law limiting the legal length of the shoe. You, we probably see those in those um those comedy movies where men had those long those long shoes on. You probably saw it with the pointed toes. All right, so we all right. So that was number nine, ladies and gentlemen. Number ten. No fork, no eating utensils, basically that's what it's saying. No spoon, no knife, and no fork. There were spoons and knives, okay, so there were spoons and knives. But the fork wasn't introduced to Europe until around the year 1500. So, my error, my error, my mistakes, they did have spoons, they did have knives, but the fork was introduced until the 1500s. Before this, people simply used their fingers. So what good was the, uh, what good was the spoon and the, and the knife? Because the people used their fingers, used their fingers to, to eat, and thought of putting a stabbing utensil into one's mouth would be considered barbaric. So they ate with their hands. Okay, nothing wrong with that because many societies on this whole planet, they do eat with their hands. Some Asian people, I got some Philippines, they eat with their hands to this day. I'm sure their hands are clean. So I guess in the Middle Ages when they ate with their hands, from what we saw, they probably had filthy, dingy hands sticking food in their mouth. We see they did not, they did not like eating utensils and they considered if you stuck any utensil in your mouth, that was considered to be barbaric. So they almost looked like the animals. They just grabbed it like a chimp. They just grabbed what they wanted and put it in their mouth like a chimp or an ape or some other higher class primate. Eleven, wound licking. You know what this talking about, that's from the, that's from the title. As a statement of humility and humanity, some saints will visit lepers and lick the wounds and eat the scab. How filthy is that? Are these untouchables? It's extremely nauseating to consider. But these saints, such, such as Saint Catherine, were considered to be particularly holy by licking Someone scab, someone cut, someone sore, someone knife wound. They lick the wound for some type of, I guess, enchant. Twelve, eagle dung polis. To ease the pain of expected mothers, midwives would feed them sugar and vinegar and rub their abdomen, abdomen with rose oils. Okay, so that don't seem too bad. It was also common practice to apply a poultice of eagle dung to ease birthing pain. So I still can't get anything about that too much either. Throughout the planet, like I got to say earlier, different societies use different animal parts for some type of enchantment or some type of Medicinal, medicinal uh, edifice to ease some type of pain. I can't complain about that part too much. Mm -hmm. Thirteen, animal criminals. It was extre extremely common for animals to be tried and sentenced for crime as if they were people. Pigs were allowed to roam freely around many common areas and were often put on trial, trial for murdering children. I guess they were wild pigs, wild boars. So they were put on trial. So I guess they had a court 
a court trial with a jury there? Or whether did he have other pigs or other animals to have a, a fair and impartial jury? So if a dog bit your child, I wonder if for, for his uh on the dog's jury, did he have other dogs to help determine the verdict? Because the dog probably say, look, if you if the humans judge me, you are not my peers. Only other dogs are my peers. Mm. 14. Women could not go on top. So what does that mean? Women could not go on top. The Christian church was so heavily involved in governing the people that evil sexual position became mandated. A woman going on top was considered a sin because it put a female in a dominant position over a male. Any sexual act that could only be utilized for pleasure and not procreation were also considered to be sin and were therefore personal with sins of up to a lifetime in a deplorable prison. Now how can they tell what she was doing when you interacting with your female wife or your male husband behind closed doors. So someone had to have been a snitch. One of those partners had to have been a snitch and told the priest or the clergy that my husband and my wife seemed like she or he was enjoying that act. So we see right then and there, snitch had this European origins being a snitch on your sexual partner how sad is that how sad is that and finally my good people we at number 15 hooray uh, I knew this everyone had light remember what it said the dark ages, the medieval ages, affected humanity. Does it seem, from our reading, is it affecting the whole world or one certain region of the planet? Number 15 said, everyone had lights. And as we know, on this planet right now, in the 21st century, some people get lights, or some groups of people get lights far more than other people get lights. And some people on the planet having their lights is basically non-existent. And I'm not going to tell you, my friends, who those people are who have a high tolerance for resistant lights on their bodies. It's up to you to do that research. So let me read this. Just about everyone from peasants to noblemen to kings were infected by the disgusting, the deplorable, the hideous light. The large billow on wig and comet in the Middle Ages were created as a response to light infestations that caused people to shave their heads. Unfortunately, even wigs would get infected with light and similar biting insects. So it's not just the light. It said there were other biting insects. The, the, the medieval ages was cruel on its inhabitants. Thank you, my good people, for taking the time to visit my channel. You all have a wonderful, peaceful, delightful day. Goodbye.